church with our online family and friends. We are just so excited to be here this morning. We thank God for just allowing us another opportunity just to come and praise the name of Jesus. On today, we're going to sing a song that you are going to learn. The name of the song is, I'm so glad that the Lord saved me. How many of y'all know that the Lord has saved you and you have been saved? Stand to your feet. And once you know this song, once you learn it, we're going to ask that you sing it.
intersection of the devil. We pray, Father God, that you bless us in the midst of this service. We ask, Father God, that your Holy Spirit will rule and super rule, that your Holy Spirit will teach us your word, that we will glorify you, Father God, in all that we do. Bless us in this service today, that men, women, boys, and girls will find you, will honor you, will glorify you, and be changed by you. Lord, bless us in this service today, Father God. As we ask you, Father, to forgive us for our sins, we ask you to mold our lives that we will run on and tell people that we are saved, and we are so glad that you saved us. Now bless, Father God, that your word will be strong, that your word will be clear, your word will be relevant, Father God, that others will run and tell the story of Jesus Christ and how he died for sinners like us and rose from the dead. Now, Lord, we ask you to bless this service, this service, Father God, that we will take it from here and honor you, Father, that you, Father God, will rule us and that we will honor you. And, Lord, we thank you for the victory, the victory above our enemies, the victory above those who wants to oppress, the victory, Father God, in our lives. We, we thank you for the victory and how you've given us the victory. And, Lord, we ask you to bless this service. In Jesus' name we pray, and we ask it all. Amen and thank God. I'm so glad we pray. I'm so glad. I'm so glad we pray for me. Yeah. Somebody pray for me. Have me on their mind. Look a little kind and pray for me.
eternal life from now on life that's perpetual is only through the son of god and the son of god name is jesus the christ it is him and he, him alone who blesses us it's not the priest it's not the preacher but we ought to be glad that the preacher prayed for us. Uh -huh. We ought to be glad that mama prayed for us. Yeah, right we ought to be glad that daddy prayed for us. But eternal life only comes through the sun. All right. We feed the hungry because we have eternal life. Uh -huh. We give food and clothing because we have eternal life. We are good people because we have eternal life. Yes, there are people who are good people who do not have eternal life. But the fact of the matter is, if you are going to be born again, if you are going to heaven, you need Jesus. A lady said the other day, someone asked me, do I need Jesus to go to heaven? Her reply was, brother, you need Jesus to pump gas these days. You need Jesus to go to Walmart. You need Jesus just to walk down the street. And certainly if we need Jesus just to go to Walmart, walk down the street, and to pump gas, certainly we need Jesus to go to heaven. Life as we know it down here for many of us is good. Life has afforded many of you a good retirement. Life has afforded many of you a good salary. Life has been kind to us. Your children are all in line. They run and do what you want them to do all the time. And they do it with great joy. And you, you're just so pleased with the family that God has blessed you with. And you're just excited about your life. Your boss never talks down to you. Your education was great. You never made a B or less in school. Life for many of you has been great. But you can live a fruitful life on planet Earth and die and go to hell. Today, today, I just want to emphasize to us in the room that Jesus gives us eternal life. Yes. And he gives us eternal life without us deserving this life. <coughs> Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9 declares unto us that it is by grace that we are saved. This grace is not of ourselves. It is a gift from God. And it is by faith. God has given us grace, given us salvation, and guess what? We don't even deserve it. The text declares in 1 John chapter 5, verses 11 through 12 and through 13 declares to us today, this is the record. It says, this is the witness. This is the testimony. This testimony is the report that God has given his son in order for us to have eternal life. Today, the youth in their Sunday school class went through the wordless book. And what I want them to do when they get home is to show their parents the wordless book and how to walk through that book. This is a book that has colors. It does not have pictures and it does not have words. It, it is blank pages, but it discusses with us salvation. Our youth and our young people are going to recite it to their parents and, and let their parents and their neighbors and their family members in the church know that now I understand that I can only be born again through Jesus Christ. And the wordless book points it out. The word of the book discussed with us that we were born in sin. 
We were shaping in iniquity. We were not good people when we were born. We were born, regardless of how your baby is, and he Googles when you stick him in his stomach. He came here a sinner. Regardless of how your little girl is princy and, and she makes sure that she got a hair comb and she's so disobedient, those children were born as we were sinners. And because we are sinners, we need a Savior. Because we are sinners, there's a great gulf that's fixed between us. We can't get to God and God can't get to us. The gulf, the, the great gulf that's fixed between us is sin. Sin cannot tarry. Sin cannot be in the presence of God. So we're separated by sin. What is sin? One young woman, one young boy may ask. What is sin? It is anything disobedient to God. It's when we do anything wrong. But let me tell you, it's not because we've done something wrong that we have sin in our lives. It's because of what Adam and Eve did years ago. And they passed this same bloodline down to us. And now we are sinners. We're born this way. We're sinners who need a Savior. And if we're going to heaven, we're going to have to get to a point in our lives where we receive Jesus Christ as our personal Lord and Savior. We got to receive him. We got to receive him by faith. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 says, it's not of what we can do as for his works. John picks this thought up again as he ends out the Bible right before, right before we get to Revelation. John says, this is the testimony that God has given us eternal life. This life is in his son. There is no other life like the life that son can give. God's son. We, there are a lot of people walking around there, the, the walking dead. They are the living dead. They're on their way to hell because they will not accept Jesus as a personal savior. The reason why we baptize is because the person that goes to the water believes and says to everybody that watch him or her, I believe that Jesus was born of a virgin. He was buried under the, the, the ground in a cave. He was buried, but he rose early that third day morning. The way it is demonstrated in baptism is when a person is standing there, they say to everybody that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. When they are taken under the water, it says to all of us who are watching that I believe that Jesus died and Jesus was buried in a borrowed tomb. When we bring them up out of the water, it says to everybody who's watching that I believe that Jesus rose from the dead early that third day morning. And when they get up, the, the church is shouting, well, we ought to do anyway. The church is celebrating because there's one more soul that the devil used to have that the devil no longer has. Amen, amen. That's why baptisms are public baptisms. Because there's somebody in the audience that may need to know that Jesus died for their sins, was buried in a borrowed tomb, and rose from the dead. And as a result, I'm going to give my life to Christ. Therefore, this is the record. This is the testimony that God has given us eternal life. This life only comes through God's Son. We have life on earth because we have blood flowing to every extremity of our body. We've got, got the heart beating blood and carrying the blood to every extremity of our body. We're inhaling and exhaling. And most of us inhale and exhale on our own without machine. Let me tell you, you blessed the Lord. And you don't have to go down to the hospital to see people who, who haven't having a machine to, to walk around, having to have a machine just to inhale and exhale. Let me tell you, we are blessed of the Lord. We have physical life. We're able to do things. We're able to go places. We're able to carry ourselves where we need to go. While there are other people 
People have to carry them everywhere they go. People have to be with them every time they take. Even children can get up and jump up and go and do things on their own. We are blessed of the Lord. This is the record, John says, that if we're going to have eternal life, we need Christ Jesus. And this life is in the Son of God. This life. I'm not talking about your walking around life. I'm talking about life after death. I'm talking about life from now on. If you're going to have life from now on, you got to give it to Jesus. Give your life to Jesus. Now let me just make an appeal. If you have come to the conclusion that I'm not ready for that kind of carrying on preacher. I'm not ready for Jesus because I don't want to let my stuff go. I want to let you know that when you come to Jesus, you still can have some stuff. You can still have some fun. It's like when you dance and then you change partners. You see, you can tell folk that's dancing with the devil, they dance from side to side. <laughs> and from front to back. And sometimes they even get nasty with it. You know what partner they have. But when we're saved, when we're born again, we dance up and down. We wave our hands up and down. We, we praise the God that we serve. We are dancing to glorify him. We are celebrating. It is a bad thing when you have a new partner and no one knows you have a new partner. You're on the phone with the same man. Yeah, all right. Yeah, yeah. Amen. I took a girl one out, yeah, one, out one time in Yazoo City, Mississippi. <laughs> and when I took her out, she stayed on the dance floor with everybody but me. <laughs> <laughs> she was on the dance floor with Harry on the dance floor with John on the dance floor with Mark but not Matthew <laughs> let me tell you the 50 mile ride back to Indianola, Mississippi was a hard ride it was my gas my borrowed car, my money to get in. And she danced with everybody, Brother Galvan, but me. Matter of fact, when I looked at her, she gave me that look like you better not ask me today. <laughs> Brother Whitlock, that was the first trip. Brother Miles, that was the last trip. When we come to Christ, we have to get to the point to live for Christ. When Jesus pays our bond and get us out of prison, we ought not run back to prison. And he didn't pay a $500,000 bond. He paid it all on Calvary. Thank God for Jesus. And he didn't give us life for just that moment. He gives us eternal life from now on forever. This is the record. This is the understanding. This is the testimony. This is the report. This is the witness. If we're going to have eternal life, that life is in God's Son. His name is Jesus. He who has the Son has life. It's just that simple. If you have the Son of God, you have life. People like to ask those blatant questions, those, those blanket questions. Well, are you saying that the Muslim's not going to heaven? Are you saying that those who worship Buddha is not going to heaven? The bottom line is, if you don't trust Jesus Christ, you will not open your eyes in heaven. Right. Now you can choose to be a Muslim and, and open your eyes to Jesus and receive Jesus because those are just titles that men have created. Yeah. But when it comes to being a Christian, yeah. when it comes to being a Christian, 
When it comes to live like Christ, then we have the Son, and the Son is Jesus. Amen. That's why that's why we take our children to the water. That's why we baptize our children. It's because on their levels of understanding, on their levels of understanding, they believe the story. That Jesus died for us a long time ago. That Jesus was buried for us a long time ago. And then Jesus rose from the dead a long time ago. Yes, sir. Romans 5 and 8 says, while we were yet in our sin, Christ died for us. God commended his love for us. He, he devoted his love for us. He gave and showed his love for us in that while we were yet sinners, Jesus Christ died for us. It was a voluntary death. Amen. Can't you hear Jesus saying, no man takes my life, I lay it down for a friend. No man takes my life, I have chosen to give my life for the whole world. As you are doing your Bible listening, I'm sure you ran across Ephesians and now you're moving into the first part of Exodus. Amen? Amen. Amen? And if you have gone, gone through Leviticus, I'm sorry, if you've gone through Leviticus, if you have walked through Leviticus, you see and you understand better now because the priest had to lay his hand on the goat and when he laid his hand on the goat, the goat went running through the fields, yeah. running through the wilderness, and it was a symbol of the priest laying the sins of mankind on the head of the goat, and this now scapegoat runs away with our sins, and we're being cleansed from our sins, but the Bible teaches today, the preacher doesn't have to do that anymore. But it is the preacher's responsibility to tell you about the Lamb of God. Jesus Christ, he is the lamb that has taken our sins far away. As you went through Leviticus, let me make sure we get that on record. The Bible said this is the record. As you went through Leviticus, you saw beyond a shadow of a doubt, you saw the fact that this particular priest would lay his hand on the goat, he would go off in the wilderness, and the people would rejoice because their sins have been carried away. But it happened for us on Calvary. Oh, the old preacher back home would say it, it was on Calvary that our sins were paid. It was on a skull hill called Calvary. You know, sometimes those woods, they make fun of my head. But if you're going to be saved, you're going to have to go past the skull hill called Calvary. Right, yeah. All right. They call me P-Head. And, and when you get to Calvary, it's going to be knocks on Calvary just like this on my head. So you can talk about it as much as you want to. The fact is, you got to go by a place that looks just like my head. All right, all right. Go ahead. Go ahead. The skull hill called Calvary. And at Calvary, Jesus died for us. And after he died, they pierced him and his sides. I said after he was dead. After he had given up the ghost. After he died, they pierced him in his side. Out came blood and water. And the blood that Jesus shed it on Calvary was enough, was just enough to save the whole world. He that has life, he got life because he got the son. He that has the son has life. Look at the next part of the verse. He that has not the son does not have life. Tell your children, tell your babies now, baby, I want you to go to heaven when you die. Mm -hmm. And don't promise them a long life because you don't, you're not in control and you don't control their lives. Amen. Amen. Right. Amen. It's an amazing thing for you to watch your child just drift away. Mm -hmm. If they drift away, make
make sure you have taken them over the salvation story. That over 2,000 years ago, Jesus died for their sins. Don't tell them they're good enough to go to heaven because they're not good enough. It's because of what happened on the skull hill called Calvary that sets them right with God. It says that he that has life has the Son. He that has life has eternal life. And he who has not the Son has not life. Do not have life. And because they don't have life, hell was made for somebody. The other question that many will ask, will a gracious God, will a good God put us in hell? Well, when I give you a choice, when I give you a choice, am I pushing you to hell? The world won't come to an end until everybody's heard the word. Until everybody's heard about Jesus. Putin can do whatever he wants to do. It's all in God's time. We can elect whoever we want to elect. God is still in control. As a matter of fact, every time we elect somebody, it lines up with the word. Paul says to Timothy, Timothy, the day is coming where men will be lovers of themselves more than lovers of God. He says to Timothy, Timothy, men will be heady and high-minded. He says to Timothy, one of these days, Timothy, men will be more in tune with who they are than who God is. He says to Timothy, Timothy, the day is coming where they will love the creature more than they will love the creator. It says that one of these days, men and women will have unnatural affection. Women with women, men with men. Doing that which God calls unseemly. And regardless of who it is, regardless of how they're, they're connected to you, it is our charge to tell them what the word of God says. So this is the record. We see right now that those days that Paul talked about are already here. It also talks about there will come a day where men will, will cause bloodshed. Yeah. And it doesn't matter. We got a four-year-old packing a gun now. We talk about John Wayne days. Oh, we I talked John Wayne a long time ago. A four year old walk around with a gun. That joker was so big at four. Wearing a diaper. <laughs> with a gun in his hand. <laughs> and the dangerous thing about it, he's pointing at other children. Yeah. And he's putting it on his neck, hollering, and you can hear the trigger being pulled. <laughs> And he's seen it somewhere before because he said, pew, pew, pew. the day that Paul talked about to Timothy, those days are here. And then, and then the Bible says that men would, will not give to marriage. Women will not give to marriage because they got other things going. Let me just stop right here and tell you, just because you're in the same domicile doesn't mean you're married. All right, all right, all right. Say what it is. Just because you have the same address doesn't mean you're married. All right. You have to have the blessings of God on your life. And because of these things that I mentioned, it doesn't mean you are a bad person. It just simply means that God has given us another chance to get it right. So he that has life has eternal life. He that has not life has, has not Christ, has not life. And if you really, really want life, if you want to really live on top of the world, try Jesus. You think you got it going on now? 
submit to Jesus. You think that life is going well for you now? Submit. I wasted so much money so long doing things that did not represent God. I could have not just been a millionaire. I could be a multi-millionaire today, brother. If I had to just follow Christ. I could have been a, if I could just go back and collect every penny, every dime. You know I will, right? If I could just go back and collect every penny, every dime, every quarter. Because when I grew up, there was a pay phone. And the pay phone, first they started out using a dime. That's why the songwriter talks about dropping a dime. You, the pay phone, you could use a dime. Then the pay phone comes and said, the law of supply and demand is right before us. So now I'm going to require 25 cents. Then they got smart. If you take a collect call, you, it's a dollar and 75 cents. If that's around a call from prison, it's a dollar and 50 cents per, this is, this is back way when now. It's a dollar and 50, percent, 50 cents per minute. Now, you know the joke in there ain't got no money. So somebody got to pay it. Let me just share with you. We waste our time with other gods. We even waste our time. After we say we waste our time with stuff that God is looking at us and frowning over. The church. The church ought to be the staple of the community. The church ought to be the example for many to see. The church ought to be the beacon light for others to watch. And when I talk about the church, I'm talking about the bride of Christ. All right. That's right. Other people ought to look at us and say, ooh, I want that life. They ought to look at us and say, I can tell that when you get home, you're dropping on your knees because nobody can be blessed like you are blessed. Right, the church, the body of Christ, we have life that no one else has. And it doesn't matter if we live where we want to live, drive what we want to drive, or, or go where we want to go, or have what we want to have. We are Christians. We have life. And this present day trauma, this present day suffering, is not to be compared to what John says is eternal life. I'm good with suffering a little while. I had to suffer through Sister Davis rolling the ball in on me. On a pool table. I had to suffer through it. And I knew at 16, 17, I was taking trophies, taking names, and whooping up for But I had to just say to myself, Sister Whitlock, I had to say to myself, this present day suffering does not compare to the glory that is going to be revealed through Christ Jesus right. on the other side for eternity. All right, now. Whatever, whatever your, 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 your thing is, whatever that, that turns you off, whatever you're suffering through, it is just a morsel of a moment. Right. It's just a little bit of a moment. We ought to live after we are saved and we realize we have eternal life. We ought to live for the glory of God. Paul says in Corinthians, he says that there is no suffering that we're going through that Jesus has not gone through. And he says to us, there is no temptation unto any man, unto us or anybody else that Jesus has not suffered through. This present day suffering is temporal. The life in Jesus Christ is from now. Oh. He closes out in verse 13 by saying, these things I have written to you that you believe in the name of the Son of God. Mm -hmm. He says he wants you to believe in the name of the Son of God because during that day there were heretics there and these heretics were trying to tell them that salvation came by other means. Mm -hmm. Some said that salvation came through works. Some said that salvation came to doing great deeds. Some say that salvation came through baptism. He says, I'm writing these things to you that you won't be confused. Right. And he closes by saying, in that you will continue to believe. Mm -hmm. 
Don't go out and find something new. Don't go out and, and, and latch on to any other doctrine. He says, I'm saying these things to you so that you must continue to believe. Now, he's not telling us that we need to continue to believe in order to be saved. He said we need to continue to believe in order to be encouraged that he has said the right thing. Don't let people tell you you need to speak in other tongues in order to be saved. Don't let people tell you you need to roll on the floor and holler, Hail Mary, Hail Mary, in order to be saved. Don't let people tell you you got to run around the room. I know some people in the room are glad that they didn't have to run around the room to get saved. You must believe that Jesus is the Son of God. And out of obedience unto God, he gave his life as a ransom for you and me. He died for us. He was buried for us. And he rose for us. And now we are saved when we accept the story. And we have eternal life. He says, continue to believe in the name of the Son of God. Who is that name? His name is Jesus. Yes. Uh -huh. He is the righteous Son of God. Okay. He was tested like we were tested. Mm -hmm. he, he was tested like we're being tested. Mm -hmm. Lust of the flesh, lust of the eye, the pride of life was with him also, but he passed the test. Let me tell you, if you want to follow a champion, Follow the champion who has passed the test. Some of you didn't even know who Kobe Bryant was until he died. But if you're going to follow a champion, you got to realize that Kobe showed up five hours before practice began. He stayed two, three hours after practice because he wanted to be a champion. You got to remember that Kobe Bryant was bullied because he was so tall in his school. <clears throat> you have to use what God has given you to the best of your ability and let God bless you. You want to be a champion? Follow the great champion. His name is Jesus. He's the son of God. He gave his life for you on Calvary. On the skull hill called Calvary. He died for you and he died for me. He rose from the dead. And he's available to us today. The same Jesus is available. Will you try him? Will you try him? And will you continue to believe? Because life is in God's son. The door of the church is open. The invitation is extended. You ought to try Jesus. Try him. He won't disappoint you. Give your life to him. If you've never given your life to Jesus, this is your moment. Whether you're young or whether you're old, I just want to let you know that life is in the Son of God. The door is open. The invitation is extended. If you're in the room and you want to try Jesus, just come on down the aisle and we'll introduce you to him. He's the same Jesus that died for us and rose from the dead. If you'd like to receive Jesus as your Savior, just bow your head with me and invite him into your life. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you rose from the dead. Now come into my life and make me a new person. Save my soul. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Thank God. We believe if you honestly receive Jesus as your Savior, you're now born again. We believe that you are qualified for heaven. 
Not because of your goodness, but because of what God's Son, Jesus, has done on Calvary. And now you have eternal life. And the Bible teaches that the church ought to rejoice when just one have come to Christ. And we rejoice believing that you've given your life to Jesus Christ. We thank God for who he is and what he's already done. He is the great God. He is the great King. He is the King of Kings. God has blessed us again and he's given us another chance. Don't let this moment pass you by. Trust Jesus and he will make a difference in your life. It is offering time. It's time to give to the Lord through tithes, offering and sacrificial gifts. If you need an envelope, please raise your hand. Please raise your hand way up high. And you will be served if you if you need an envelope or envelope. Please raise your hand up high, and you will you will be served. It's an opportunity to give to the Lord. I wrote a note down here saying, and I want you to join me in my request. I am a recruiter. I'm recruiting for laborers of the harvest. I personally am a recruiter. I'm recruiting for laborers of the harvest. And I want everybody in the room and everybody who's listening to, to join me in my quest. I'm recruiting for members of Sunday school. We already have your books. We don't want to raise, waste money. I'm recruiting. I want you to recruit with me. I'm recruiting for members of Sunday school. We want to pack this building out with Sunday school attendees. Don't be an absentee. Be an attendee. I'm recruiting for Sunday school. I'm recruiting for Bible study. I'm recruiting for people to come and flock the pews for Bible study. I am looking for people whether good or bad, saved or unsaved, from Sunday school and Bible study. I want you to join me in my recruiting. I'm also recruiting for worship service attendees. I want you to join me in my plight to recruit people to come to church. We can't just rip Hebrews chapter 10 out of the Bible and just say it, it's not there. The Bible teaches that we ought to assemble ourselves together. So I'm recruiting for people to come to church. And I'm recruiting for them to show up in Sunday school and stay for church. I'm recruiting for them to show up at 715 on Wednesday night and play, stay through Bible study. The last thing I'm recruiting for, and I want you to help me in my flight, that is offering time. I'm recruiting for tithers and offerers. If that's a word, I just made that one up. I'm recruiting for tithers and offerers. I'm recruiting for people to give 10% plus. I'm recruiting for people to begin to tithe and watch what God does. In your tithing, God does some things that, that you never even imagined. I'm recruiting for people to pray with me and to join me. The Bible says, pray to the Lord of the harvest that he will send laborers into the field. The field is talking about sending people to reach souls for Christ. Our slogan is to lift Jesus that people will come to knowledge of Jesus Christ. Will you join me in that? Will you join me in being a serious recruiter? Every person you go around, every person you see, can you help us recruit? And then don't let them show up and you're not here. And then don't let them show up and you make in here. It's like giving a person an invitation to your house, and then when you give them a person, give them an invitation to your house, they got to sit outside in the driveway and wait. Will you join me in being a recruiter? We want people to get to know who Jesus is. And because this is a temporary thing here, this, this life we live is so temporary, we ought to be putting stars in our crown, rewards. And you get rewards when you reach people for Jesus. So 
So it is offering time. Let's read this scripture together. Let's read this together. This giving scripture, you want to read this giving scripture together so that we know that Pastor David's not just talking, he's, uh, he's actually there. Let's read it together. Whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each one must give as he decided in his heart, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 6 through 7. Father God, we thank you, Father God, for this opportunity to give unto you. We thank you for blessing us and keeping us and enabling us to have money to income and increase. We ask you to bless us as we come to give. In Jesus' name, amen. We ask you to stand, if you would. Stand and follow first impressions from the rear to the front. Bring forth the Lord's tithes, offering, and sacrificial gifts. This side to stand, follow first impression from the rear to the front, bring forth the Lord's tithe offering and sacrifice. I will bless him in everything, all that is within me. Bless him, bless him, bless him, bless him. Bless him. If you want to give electronically, you can do so by giving by way of Zelle. Our Zelle account is lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Our Zelle account is lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Our P.O. Box is P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. That's P.O. Box 503. Missouri City, Texas, 77459. Father, we thank you for these gifts. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. We thank God for who he is and what he's already done. He is the great Lamb of God. Whose birthday is it? Whose birthday? Whose birthday? I'm going to ask the birthday person to stand. The birthday person for February 23rd. We want to stand. Let's clap for him and encourage him. We're so glad you were born. Amen. We're just so, we're so glad you were born, fella. We're looking forward to you doing great things. Hallelujah. Don't let your mama and your brother make fun of you and make you think you're embarrassed. We're glad you were born. Amen. 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 Jordan family, 
Robert Fromberger, Jacqueline Torres, Omar Galvan, Melvin White and Woods family, Ed Brennan and family, Dorothy Sellers, Billy Banks, Kevin and Katrina Whitlock, Beverly Wallace, laborers for the harvest, teachers and students, protection in schools, and world peace. <laughs> Father God, we thank you for those who have missed it. We pray for them, and we pray for those who have not missed it. Lord, bless them. Thank you, Lord. We know that you're the great healer. We know you to be the doctor. We know you to be the lawyer. We know you to be a counselor. Lord, we ask you to encourage, to heal, to move as only you can move. Lord, we ask you, Father God, to raise up every bow down here. Comfort and keep everybody who is hurting. Regulate minds and regulate hearts. Bless in the name of Jesus. Father God, we need you now. Bless our church. We ask you to draw people to you and draw them to our church. Lord, we ask you to wipe away every excuse. We pray for safety. We pray for your influence. And we pray that you keep us, Father God. Lord, we pray for world peace. That anger will have no more place. The prejudice will be gone. The accountability will become real. Lord, bless our youth and our young people. Bless their minds and their hearts. Bless them to be safe. Bless parents to parent. And bless children to be parented. Encourage every family member. Bless every marriage. Bless every single person. Bless those who have hope. Bless those who have dreams. Bless those who are about to give up. Hold them, Lord. Give them hope. Give them strength. Encourage them to wait on you. Bless them to work as if it's their last days. And bless them trust you in their work. Lord, we ask for victory. We ask for success. We ask for rejoicing. That we will be careful to give you all the honor, all the glory, and all the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. It is time for communion. This is the moment that we reenact and we are reminded of what Jesus did for each of us. Jesus says to his disciples, and he says to, he says to us today, that as often as you do this, it shows forth my death and suffering until I come again. Our communion is, is geared toward those who have received Jesus Christ as their Savior and who have been water baptized all the way under the water and back up. Saying that I trust Jesus, death, buried, and resurrection. Yeah, yeah. Communion is also, as Paul writes, and Luke writes, 
it is a time to examine yourself. Examine your deeds. Examine your motives. It is a time to to clear your heart, your spiritual heart. This is a time for forgiveness. Because in biblical days, they would have people come up and they would they would reconcile one to the other before partaking in communion. So we want everybody to, to focus on your heart, focus on on getting it right with God. Because the Bible says that those who did not examine themselves, did not repent of their sin, the Bible says they have fallen asleep. And it says that some of them have gotten weak and feeble. When he uses the term fallen asleep, he's, he's simply saying that some people have died because they didn't clear their heart didn't examine themselves, ask God for forgiveness and forgive others. And when it says they have gotten weak or gotten feeble, they have gotten sick. And if they did die, it was near unto death. So let us pray and ask God to bless us. Father God, we thank you now. We thank you for the table. We thank you for the bread and the wine. We thank you, Father God, for blessing us. To get a chance, a chance to partake again and do what you asked us to do. God, we ask you to bless the table. Bless the drink. Bless the bread. Bless us, Father God, to examine ourselves and and bless us, Lord, that we will forgive others and ask you to forgive us. Clear us, Father God, of all things that hinder us from taking good communion. So in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.
Yeah. 
left out a part. He said, he died, and then it all say, he rose from the dead. He rose from the dead. Bible said they sung a hymn and they went out. You 